I call the next part of the dinner special podcast the pressure cooker. I'm going to ask you <laughs> seven fast and fun questions that we want to know your answers to. Are you up for it? Sure. Okay, perfect. Number one, which food shows or cooking shows do you watch? Okay, we don't watch a lot of TV, but we do watch Top Chef. <laughs> um, and does Tony Bourdain's No, no Reservations count? Sure. Is that would, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, those two right now. Okay, awesome. Number two, what are some food blogs or websites we have to know about? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's see. I was going to say um, Thought for Food with Brian Samuels, but I think he's been on your show, so everybody knows about him now, right? <laughs> no, it's it's great. I mean, I Thought for Food is awesome, so. Yeah. Um, let's see, who else? So two Red Bulls is another one. Has she been on the show yet? No, she has not. <laughs> no, okay. I like her. I feel she's like she's under the radar and um, Hummingbird High. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Number three, who do you follow on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube that make you happy? YouTube. Hmm. Oh, wow. YouTube too. Okay. On YouTube. Uh, let's think. I used to follow Happy Slip. Have you ever heard of her? Mm -mm. She's a um, she's a Filipino American like comedian. She used to do like little skits. She's kind of tapered off because she started a family. Um, but once in a while, she'll still post things on there. I think she's hilarious because she captures all of those stereotypes so well. On Instagram, I follow way too many people. Like my feed is just crazy, and um, a lot of food bloggers, but I think the ones that surprise me the most are people who are really into food, don't necessarily have food blogs um, that I know of, because <laughs> it's not on their their um, their profile, but Bruna Zet is one of them. Um, there's Abby's Farmhouse Kitchen. She's up in Sonoma, but she's like, she's got a, um, a winery with her husband and I love seeing what she's doing, um, in the kitchen. She's very adventurous and she's, you know, got some young kids and they had duck the other night, for example. And so it's exciting to see what other people are cooking who don't necessarily have blogs. Um, and I find, I find like the engagement on Instagram is really fascinating there. So. Right. And I think on Instagram, like, you know, it's kind of like a quicker way to sort of get a picture of a blo a bl of a blog, I guess. It, yeah. Even if they don't have a blog, it's sort of just like, you know, it's just a picture and a comment and then all of the people are engaging at, at once. So it's it's kind of like a mini blog, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's, I mean, it's micro blogging. I think it counts as blogging. Yeah, I would count it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Number four, what is the most unusual or treasured item you have in your kitchen? Hmm. So other than that ratty old binder with my mom's handwriting, I have these, um, I went through a phase where I was collecting vintage cake stands, like vintage pressed glass from like the 1800s. Wow. So I have a few of those um, and it's really weird. I just find them super precious and we've moved many times and I still can't get rid of them. I don't use them all the time except for like special occasions like Thanksgiving, but yeah, um, it would be my binder and then those cake stands. <laughs> Perfect. Number five, name one ingredient you used to dislike that you now love. Oh, that's easy. Cilantro. <laughs> um, growing up, I was like, this is gross. I would pick them out of the noodles, you know, and throw them away. And now I'm just like, just like eating it raw. <laughs> like I have to have cilantro in the house all the time. And I put it in almost too many things actually <laughs> okay number six it. yeah number six what are a few cookbooks that make your life better you know there are some cookbooks that are surprises to me um i reviewed a cookbook last year called the green market cookbook that was a really nice surprise there were so many stories behind all the farmers who sell their goods at green market um i loved reading the recipes that all the chefs back east would do with you know the food that they got at green market that was a nice surprise and then like just little things like i like cookbooks that surprise me so the other one was um the union square cafe cookbook my daughter bought it she was um she was doing a camp one summer and she went into the library they were selling old books and she's like oh mommy i got your present i'm like oh thanks 
it turned out to be an amazing cookbook. So those things make me happy when it's a book that I just did not expect to wow me. So Right. Awesome. And finally, number seven, what song or album just makes you want to cook? Oh, Jack Johnson, um, Making Banana Pancakes. When that's on, I'm just, it, it's like instant happy and I want to make pancakes. <laughs> it's great on a Saturday morning. Perfect. Well, congratulations, Lyra, and you have officially survived the pressure cooker. Oh, good. 